Good morning, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in Bukhara, Uzbekistan, and this is an ancient city in Central Asia. Whoa along the Silk Road. And today we are gonna go on an ultimate food and sightseeing tour of Bukhara. We're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna eat some amazing food. We are gonna go to some of the historical sites. I'm gonna share it all with you in this video. But this morning we are starting at the local bazaar, the morning market. We're gonna start with breakfast and just walk around the bazaar for a little while. Hanging out with some of the very friendly aunties from the bazaar. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> the bazaar is where you come to see, to experience local life. It's where people, I mean, you can come here to buy fruits and vegetables. There's clothes, there's all sorts of different types of rice, but this is, it's like a full shopping experience for everything you could need in a day, all in one kind of like, well, it's like multiple buildings and little sections. Step into this room and I can immediately smell the dairy. It's layers and layers. This is the, the kaimak? kaimak thing, yeah. We got a bowl of kaimak, which is the cream, and now we're stopping for some honey. She has just an assortment of different recycled bottles of honey. She's friendly and jolly, lifting up the honey. We got the cream and the honey, now we need some bread, and we're heading over into the bread section. Oh, immediately step in here. The, the bread is filling my nostrils. To my understanding, in Uzbekistan, there's not a huge going out for breakfast culture. So most people would buy bread, the cream, the honey, the different components, bring it back to their house and eat at their home. She has a table behind that we're just gonna sit at. Uh, just special, just to, to eat what we just bought. Oh, this is perfect. So, yeah. They're almost like a base of something, but they're huge, and it smells so good. You can see it's kind of like glistening. Oh, wow. She's giving us her own. <laughs> She's giving us her own gem she brought oh, to beautiful. eat. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that is the true hospitality. What, we yeah, didn't ask, wow. we just, you know, kind of summoned ourselves, uh, ourselves yeah. in, and they were like going. She just dished us yeah. her own, her own Crank breakfast. Fresh, fresh morning brewed green tea. Crispy and flaky. Yep. Oh man. Good. And then you can kind of give it into, tear it into individual pieces. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can lay, see the layer. Lay, oh, that's lay. almost like butter on the top. Yes. It's like a. Like it's whole thing is like a butter. Yeah. Because the whole thing is much layer. You can. Oh wow. Yeah, wrap around. No spoons. So you, no forks. Only bread and kind of. <laughs> you just feel and see the thickness of that. Hmm. It's, like it's so rich, childhood memories coming <laughs> back. It's so rich, so creamy, but like refreshing at the same time. Oh, and as you get further down, it's kind of like juicier. <laughs> mm. Oh, mm. it has a different taste on the bottom. It's like sweeter. What's unique about this honey is that it is um, bees that have eaten the pollen from the cotton and then made, made honey out of it. So it's cotton honey. And cotton is a very important crop. In, in Uzbekistan. It's the greatest type of sweetness, honey. Really, really sweet, really condensed, really floral. Mm. He's perfect, been, perfect. He's, he's been quiet the whole time. <laughs> no spoons, no forks, only bread and kaimak. Mm. It's beautiful, perfect. No. It's perfect. Yeah, it's so soothing in the morning. Now you got the point. I got the point now? Yeah. And then I'm gonna try some of their own preserve that they have kindly offered us. Stick this onto the bread, onto the kaimak. Oh, oh yes. Oh, that is a bite right there. <laughs> that combination. It does taste like cranberries, really tart and sweet. It's a dynamic duo. That was amazing. Bye bye. Uh, bye bye. Have a good day. Rahmat. Breakfast was a perfect way to start this tour of Bukhara. 
Got my hat now, sun is starting to come out and we are off to walk around, see some of the most important, some of the most significant historical sites. And so Bukhara dates back to the sixth century and it was a center along the Silk Road, it was a center of trade. Um, and it later became a center of scholarship, of culture, a hub. Caravans would come through here, um, bringing goods from China and from the Mediterranean and it was, a, it was an important center. And there's uh, madrasas, there's markets, there's bazaars, it has this real kind of mystic feel to it. It's a uh, chess. We've moved over now to one of the most iconic, one of the most beautiful courtyards and most important sections of Bukhara. The most prominent feature is the 12th century minaret which is 49 meters high and if you can see the geometric patterns etched within the construction and there's a very interesting story behind this minaret. Genghis Khan came here and he was conquering Bukhara and destroying a lot of the, the buildings and the, the city uh, but when he saw the minaret he was just stooped by its beauty and he somehow his hat fell off to the ground and he had to lean over to pick up his hat put his hat back on. He told his troops to, to keep the minaret, to save the minaret. And so the minaret is the oldest in the square, uh, but then the mosque and then the madrasa has since been rebuilt. To think that this dates back to the 12th century and that Genghis Khan was here and he chose to save this minaret. It's, it's mind blowing. The history, the, the value, the significance. Just stepping into the mosque, such a peaceful courtyard. When you're in here, you just feel the coolness of the bricks um, and then just the, you can hear, I mean, I'm speaking really quiet, but you can hear it echo. We are getting hungry after walking around for a couple hours. We are on our way to this very special restaurant. We gotta leave right now because we gotta get there as they're taking it out of the oven. We drove just about 15 minutes outside of town on the outskirts of Bukhara to this restaurant and oh, there's definitely meat in the air. Doesn't really look like much from the outside, just kind of like glass panels and kind of like a big building, but you come back here, there's a beautiful courtyard, the flowers, the grapes, there's, is that a, oh, it's an apple tree. This restaurant is famous, is known for their tandoori lamb and so that's what we're gonna eat. The thought of tandoori lamb, you can just imagine it just melting on your tongue, how tender it's gonna be. So in the tandoori oven, they are burning wood. They're burning apricot wood to give it a unique fragrance aroma, which then ends up in the meat as well. Before they pull the lamb out, they're first gonna start baking bread. Time has come, it's time for the lamb. They, they, he broke off that clay, you can see the steam start to pour out. It, yeah, it smells like lamb. Oh yeah, and they have a, a, a layer of meat which is hanging. Um, and I, I mean, I, th I thought that was the, the main layer, but after he removed that top layer, then the entire tandoor is just stuffed full of legs, just chunks, bone chunks of meat. It's like a jacuzzi in there, full of just fall apart, tender, just oily, juicing lamb. The aroma, the spices, you can see the paprika, and they also marinate it in, um, I don't know if you can see any of the, the pieces, but they marinate it in, um, or rub it in juniper. Not mad. Not mad. Oh. oh, it's burning hot. Oh, wow. Oh, that's ridiculously tender. You can taste like that paprika in there and like this earthiness to it. Amazing. Oh, garlic. 
garlic. They bring the panfuls of fall apart tender lamb into the kitchen where he's slicing it up now and he's gonna like weigh out our portion and give us a, a platter of it. Um, and then over on this side is where they are chopping up the salad. They've got the tomatoes, the onions, just buckets of onions. Well, we're sitting under the grapevines, the, the kind of shady, sunny contrast. Uh, but he just brought out the hot, fresh bread. Mmm. That is a special bread. That's almost like a, it almost tastes like a pie crust. I'm pretty sure I can taste lamb. And a beautiful salad. I love how there's just some, just some rough cut dill and basil on top. Dill and basil. Mm. The wait is over, even though I had a I had a taste test, so that kind of like it just made me want even more lamb. But he brought us the plate. They chop it up. They give you a selection. We got some ribs. We got some leg on there. Oh wow, that is ridiculously tender. It just melts in your mouth. You feel the like strings of the lamb, the fat, the like paprika marinade, that like earthiness. Mm. So good, so tender, like a like a feet of baby. You know, like so tender. <laughs> We're gonna dip it into the tomato sauce. Go for it. Dip. Yep. 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 Yeah. <laughs> It's just like oozing with fatty, like jelly, jelly lamb. And also the tomato, sour, complemented so much. Oh. Now it's just lamb fat that just like, it's almost like cheese coming off. In Uzbekistan, whenever you have meat, you always drink tea. Well, actually for every meal you drink tea, but the tea, the hot tea, it washes everything down, gets the digestion started after just fatty, ultra flavorful meat like that. As I've learned since being in Uzbekistan so far is that there's one dish that like tops them all. It's the national dish of Uzbekistan and every city you go to has a different, like slightly different variation, well even completely different variation of the dish. Uh, but it's like, it's like the dish, like one of those dishes that you cannot say you have been to a city until you have eaten this dish. <laughs> We're here to eat Bukhara style plov and it's cooked in these, they look like giant copper kettles. They just told us that the pots, the copper pots are 150 years old. So that means like you've eaten here, your father's eaten here, your grandfather, your great grandfather, your great great grandfather has eaten out of the mother pot. This version definitely has more of a raisin aroma to it than other versions that I've had so far in Uzbekistan. He actually tosses the rice, it gets some air before it lands perfectly onto the plate, but he does it so fast, so much practice, the carrots just fly directly onto the rice. Uh, man, he scoops and tosses, scoops and tosses. <laughs> But again, it's just a massive platter. You can smell the raisiny aroma to it. There's horse sausage sprinkled around. There's quail eggs. I'm gonna take a bite first. What is the delicacy here and which is different from what I've seen in other plovs? And by the way, it's sheep butt. Oh, wow, that was like blubber. That is, that's fatty. Next I'm gonna scoop up for a bite with a lot of raisins, the rice, and then you can see the yellow strands of carrot. Mm. 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 Yeah. It's really heavy on the raisins, so you've got like that sweet, like almost jam flavor to it. They kind of just melt. And again, the rice is really fragrant from that flaxseed oil. Not forgetting a piece of kazer, which is the horse sausage, and what you gotta do, is you've got to peel that that skin. There you go. Then you've got just the the pure horse sausage. It's so rich. 
And it's such a like powerful meat, but it's so flavorful and it really is such a delicacy. It's called gulop, literally translated as a, like a water of the flowers. You gotta try it first. Thank you. It's a rose flower pea. Mm. Yeah, it does smell like roses, like a, like a blooming rose. Ooh. Wow, that is sweet. But it does like, it does have a floral taste, but yeah, that's a little on the sweet side for me. Just outside of the madrasa, there's this awesome green Russian motorbike, uh, motorcycle, and the owner, he's gonna take me for a quick spin just around. Rahmat. Rahmat, Rahmat. Oh, that was fun. We're stopping next at another very iconic mosque. And what's really picturesque about this mosque are the wooden columns as well as this entire kind of foyer entrance area. Oh. Step inside and it's just so peaceful and so, so quiet. Having a quick tea break and a lady carrying a platter of this sweet snack came around. It looks like a wafer with some kind of sweet something in the center. Oh, it's like a, like kind of like a toffee. It's drank behind bars. Simple green tea. And we're just sitting here, we're just kind of having a relaxing afternoon, but this is, this is really what a significant part of Bukhara is just soaking in the history. It has this really relaxed, charming, just relaxing pace and feel to it. And just sitting here drinking tea, this is, I think this is one of my favorite things to do in Bukhara. Hey, Micah. Finally, after kind of doing a loop around this historic area, we have come to the palace. And the palace is an imp the, the walls are impressive. They're so thick, made of brick. This was where the king of Bukhara lived, as well as the most important people, and it was the most secure, most fortified, it's like a castle, most fortified place in the entire city. You can get an amazing view. The walls, yeah, just are incredibly thick, and I like that circular column at the corners there. We had an amazing afternoon, just kind of relaxing and just kind of hanging out and again, just soaking in Bukhara. Uh, but tonight for dinner, we are at one of the legendary restaurants right along the pond. It's very atmospheric. They're playing live music and we're about to dig in for dinner. We're beginning with Bukhara signature style samosa and it's almost like a little pocket envelope. Oh, it's so juicy. You taste the lamb and the onions in there and then also the tomato. One of the main dishes that we're eating tonight is called kozo shurpa. And this is a, it's a pot, like a ceramic pot of soup. And there's meat and potatoes, I think a lamb and potatoes and carrots in there. It simmers for at least half a day, just slow simmers. And all those juices melt. Oh yeah, you can see the little chunks of fat floating on the top there. There are chunks of lamb and potato and onions. Oh, and there's chickpeas in there too. You take the chunks, put them in, oh, put them into the bowl. But then you leave the soup in the pot to eat the soup from the pot. Mm -hmm. mm. That's been cooked for like 12 hours. It's really hot. Mm. And then it stays hot in that ceramic vessel. It is very tasty, very meaty. Mm. This is not the first time today that I've had very tender lamb. Okay, next up for an eggplant salad. Oh yeah, that's good. You, immediately the garlic hits you. Mm. 
This? The final dish that we're eating tonight is a kebab, a chicken skewer, chicken kebab. It's like full pieces of chicken which are just on the kebab, roasted. There's some tomato on there. It's, it smells really good. Oh yeah. Oh, it is really good. It's so it's kind of salty, but really, really juicy, and it has a very bouncy texture to it. And that completes dinner. Today has been a fantastic day. I really enjoyed starting from this morning at the market where we met so many friendly people. Oh, and that tandoori lamb, that was probably one of the highlights of the day. So that's gonna be it for today. And if you haven't already seen the previous videos in this Uzbekistan food and travel videos, I'll have it all linked below. You can check out the entire playlist. Watch it all from day one um, to here we are in Bukhara. I wanna say a huge thank you to the Ministry of Tourism Uzbekistan for inviting me here and to Bekruz for arranging everything, putting everything together and everything, everyone who helped to, to arrange this. And huge thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe and also click that little bell icon so that you get notified of the next video that I publish. Goodbye from Uzbekistan. See you on the next video. Thanks again for watching.